Back in July, we got the brand new Studio One version 5, and with it came a bunch of new tools and features, and while a lot of those were welcomed additions, there was still a lot, in my opinion, that was missing. Well, a few days ago, Presonus dropped Studio One 5.1, and today we're gonna be looking at some of the new features from this update. Hey there, I'm Ivan Calderon and welcome back to another video. So back in July, Presonus released Studio One version five. And at that time, I dropped two videos discussing what was new and what I thought was missing. Now, if I'm being 100% honest with you, this version didn't wow me as a producer and beat maker. There were a bunch of new and exciting tools, but a lot of them were designed and geared towards other audio professionals, such as composers and live performers. With that being said, and I said this in my original Studio One five video, but I think Presonus is just trying to create a DAW that everyone can use. Is that the right move? Well, that's a take for a different video. But what I said then that I'll repeat again today is that Presonus is notoriously great for listening to consumer feedback. And this update is a great example because it includes a lot of consumer requested features, some that were even in my own personal wish list. Now for this video, I will only be covering the main standout features. If you want to see every incremental change and fix that was added to this, then I definitely encourage you to go ahead and check out the change log that I'll link down below. But okay, without further ado, let's check out the new update and see what's new. Starting off, we have a small but very useful quality of life feature, and that is the ability to search for projects from the start page. Before, if you wanted to look for a previous project, you had to either scroll through this list here to find it, or search for it on your computer. Well, now we have this brand new search bar up top here, and that makes it so much easier to search for a previous project and get started working right away. Next up, we have probably the biggest and most requested feature and one that I had on my own personal wish list as well, and that is retrospective recording. If you're unfamiliar with this feature, basically it allows you to recall any part that you might've played that wasn't recorded by non-intrusively recording in the background. Let me show you how it works. So let's say you're in the studio and you're messing around trying to find the right chord progression or melody. After a while, you finally come across something that you really love, but the problem is that you never press the record button, so to replay that part exactly would be a tough task to do. Well, with retrospective record, you don't have to worry about that because Studio One recorded it for you in the background. After you've played the part that you wanted, simply go over to the inspector window by clicking on this eye here on the top left, and right near the middle, you're going to see the new option for retrospective recording. Simply click on the little red circle to the right and the part that you just played will now show up on your timeline. Moving on, we have another quality of life update and that is a new track and channel filters. Sometimes when working on songs, we want to only focus on certain tracks and if your song has a bunch of tracks, it can be quite distracting and overwhelming. Well, now if you head over to the track list, which is this little hamburger icon here on the top left, you can click that and head all the way to the bottom and use the new filter. With this filter, you can type in the name of a track or track folder to only view those tracks and have a better view of the arrangement. Before you had to select and deselect every track one by one, but now that we have this new option, you can simply just type in what you wanna see down here. The best part is that it also works with channels, so if you head over to the mixer, you could also use it here to isolate different channels and work that way as well. While we're down here on the mixer, let's talk about the new drag and drop send chain feature. You might already know that you can select multiple channels here on the mixer and then copy and insert over simply by dragging it over, but now with this update, we can also do this with send effect chains. To use this feature, much like with insert, simply select the channels that you wanna copy it over to and then drag and drop. Moving right along, we have some new Empire and pedal board improvements. So I'll be honest, I just recently started to work with these two, but as a guitarist, they're actually pretty neat. Basically, Studio One has a built-in virtual pedal board where you can add pedals and construct your perfect tone. It also has a separate plugin called Empire, which you see on the right here, that allows you to add the entire rig, including amps, cabinets, microphones, and pedals. Well, with this new update, we now have two new pedals, which are a compressor and a gate. 
And what's even cooler is that we now have the ability to drag and drop pedals between the Empire plugin and the pedal board plugin and copy that over with its parameters and work that way. It's super handy. Next up, we have some new additions to the score editor. So to start off now, we have the ability to print our notation from the score editor, which was something that was also on my personal wish list. All you have to do once you're done composing is click on the print icon here on the far right and proceed to print as normal. What's also new here are the new layout views. So you have the continuous view from before, but now we also have the multi-page view and the single page view. And with the last two, you also have the song title and the composer's name showing, which you can change by clicking on it and then changing that information in the song setup menu. Aside from this, we also have two new tabs on the left here called track and layout. The track tab allows you to further manipulate the settings for each part. So here we can set the track name, its abbreviation, the staff type, and even the transposition. This last option here is handy because if you have an instrument like a trumpet that's not tuned to C, you can use this option to compensate for that. What's cool is that you also get presets that will do all of this work for you. So say for example that I wrote a part for said trumpet. I can simply drop down this preset menu, go over to brass, click trumpet, and here everything will be pre-filled in, including the transposition. The best thing about this is that if you write a part for one instrument and then later decide that it's suited for something else, you can change the preset here. So let's change this to trombone and then Studio One will change everything accordingly, even the transposition as mentioned. Moving back up to the timeline, we have some new global track features. The global tracks include the chord track and the arranger track among others. And now instead of them being laid out on this top toolbar here, they're housed in the this drop down menu where you can turn them on or off. What's more is that you can now even access these tracks from the editor window if that's how you like to work. Speaking of the global tracks, we now have two new additions to the pack. First, we have the brand new signature track, which allows you to change the time and key signature of a song all in one place. This new track will allow you to see and change both of these parameters at once, which can be very helpful when doing key changes like in a bridge, for example. The best part is that whatever you do up here will also reflect in the score editor. The second new global track is a secondary timeline ruler, which you can set to anything from seconds to samples, bars, and even frames. Last but not least, we have the ability to bypass the gain envelopes. Now, I've been using gain envelopes a lot more recently when I'm mixing or in production, but basically what this feature does is it allows you to change the gain on a segment of an audio clip instead of the whole thing. To access it, simply right click on an audio file and then turn on the gain envelope envelope feature that you see here by clicking on this button. As you can see though, we now have a new bypass button next to this that will allow you to bypass any gain changes that you have made. But there you have it. Those are the new changes that came in Studio One 5.1. Studio One 5 is still not where I want it to be, but it makes me very happy that Presonus is actively listening to its consumers and hopeful for what's to come. Question for you though, what do you think of these brand new features? Are they enough for you to switch over to version five or do you think that Presonus still has a lot more work to do? Let me know in a comment down below. But that's it for me. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, like this video if you like to subscribe if you're not already, but I will see you on the next one.